You're referring, obviously, to the move days when I smashed things up and yeah. got involved. I mean, that was the image that was created for the move uh, by our manager, Tony Secunda, who's not sadly no longer with us. As with uh, the comparison between the Stones and the Beatles, for instance, where the Stones were the, the rebels, the Beatles were the good lads, he felt that uh, there was more longevity and more mileage in a group that had rather um, a more dangerous image, if you like, and that's mm. really what he set for the move. I think in, in me and in Ace Kefford, who... Uh, was in the move and Trevor Burton, those, us three in particular, he found three uh, chaps who were kind of willing to do his bidding and, and kind of felt the same as him. A lot of it was, was done, you know, purely for effect. Those were great days uh, in the West Midlands for bands and you only have to look at, you know, the likes of, of Jeff Lynn and, um, you know, people like that who worked together later on, Roy Wood with uh, ELO and, mm. and then Wizard and, and so on. But all that came from the move, didn't it, really? It did, although I, I must be honest with you, Jeff Lynn, I, we were aware of Jeff. When, when we were in the move, mm. he was in a band called The Idle Race and we were aware of Jeff's talent then I mean if in many ways if you listen to early Idol Race stuff and you listen to ELO stuff you can see the you know the uh, the link he was just an extraordinarily uh, clever chap but you have and, worked with him haven't you and Louis Clark oh yeah I worked mm. with Lou and worked with with Jeff I mean I've worked with most people in the business over the years one you know one bumps into them one works with them but there's a great a huge amount of talent that's come out of Birmingham over the years, and Jeff and Roy in particular, you know, two of the finest songwriters, and have gone on to great things. Well, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, our researcher uh, telephoned you to see if you were available to do this interview, and you mm. agreed, and I was sitting uh, opposite her, and she, she was saying, oh, excellent, well, we look forward to speaking to you, and you said, no problem or whatever, and she said, you're a star, thanks ever so much, and I said, <laughs> you don't realise what you just said, do you? <laughs> <laughs> the theme track to New Faces, yeah. which was the kind of forerunner, the precursor of uh, talent shows, along with Opportunity Knox. And I met um, Tony McCauley and he said, would you, would you sing You're a Star for me for mm -hmm. New Faces? And it was when I met him that he then introduced me to uh, a colleague who was, um, ran a, a commercials agency, a voice booking agency. That's where I started, and in those days, I used to do 30, 40 a week. You'd literally go from one studio to another on a daily basis. So what happens is there's generally a roster of singers, there's about 20 um, men and women who tend to do, you know, um, everything, really. You do, Mac one of you gets McDonald's one year, somebody gets it the next, one gets Nescafe one year, somebody gets it the next, and mm. so on and so forth. It's an art form in, in itself, because what you're actually selling is not so much the tune as the copy. Yeah. You're selling, you know, the, the product that you're selling. But I've been delighted to be, uh, be involved in that for all these years, because it's been a substantial part of my income, and I'm very grateful for it.